and O'Brien. He is a K-State grain market economist, and he is joining us, as he always does, for our grain market updates for the week. So, Dan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Samantha. Absolutely. So let's start off, as we always do, futures closed, and what did they really show for this past week? Um, as far as movement for the week, uh, uh, sideways to a little bit down for some of the commodities, but at these lofty price levels, you have to be down up or down 10, 15 cents really isn't a change. It happens to be just whether people are, are moving in, in and out of contracts or not. So not, not a lot of major news. Uh, these corn, for instance, closed yesterday at, uh, 686 and a quarter. And, and really it's continuing a sideways trend. We, uh, we are looking at, uh, prices that since the uh, mid middle of October basically have traded in about a 660 to 705 uh, pr uh, price range, and uh, yesterday closed right in the middle of that 682 and a quarter. So not a lot of change. So pretty much a, a sideways trend. When you do look at the, uh, um, I guess what we I try to follow the uh, relative strength index on the weekly basis. Uh, that number is right at 52.4 and 50 is, is, is neutral. So just slightly positive. So that's, that's good. I, I think out in Western Kansas on the futures though, it's uh, those movements are, are part of the story. The other half would be the strong basis. And again, that, that continues. Uh, we looked at yesterday for, for closing basis bids and uh, uh, still strong at Colby uh, the top at the highest cash elevator bid in Colby had a, a basis bid of about a dollar twenty-five, eight oh seven futures, dollar twenty-five over futures, Salina dollar also a dollar five over at, at seven eighty-seven, sixty over in Topeka, Garden City strongest basis in in this in the state, and that's generally been holding up throughout the throughout the uh throughout the uh last several months. Eight twenty-seven price, a dollar forty-five over Hutchinson, seven ninety-two. A dollar ten over, and, and even in Columbus, they've got one bid that's about 20, 20 cents higher than the others. That top bid was eight oh seven, matching out, out in Western Kansas. So strong bids, uh, grain sorghum uh, uh, in the range of forty to seventy over. Well, pardon me, in in southeast Kansas, uh, at, at only twenty two over, but ge generally all pretty good. Uh, and it, again, as we look at those uh, at the I guess historic charts of of basis trends. Still staying strong for for corn. Uh, in in fact, uh, again, we're uh, halfway through harvest, and and most years uh, when we have abundant grains, we'd be we'd be seeing basis weaken. But this year for corn, uh, Western Kansas basis is moving higher yet. Uh, it has gone up by about 20, 25 cents in the last two weeks. And again, this is harvest or the latter part of harvest. Uh, Hugoton down Southwest Kansas level, still about a dollar 50 over Salina turning sideways to higher, uh, Hutchinson sideways to higher Topeka sideways, pretty much. And also Columbus sideways. So the, the closer to you that, that people are for corn to the really drought affected areas in the Western half, half of the state, uh, that the stronger basis trends are. And, and, and again, we're just not weakening. I would say that, the what we just said for uh, for corn would also hold up for um, for uh, northwest, southwest Kansas, for Salina, for Hutchinson, uh, for Topeka, and 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 Topeka really everything except the southeast part of the state all sideways to higher uh, basis trends. So that that's an indicator for any Kansas farmer that we have that's just harvested their crops and hopefully they had a good harvest. Uh, that that the local basis bids are strong and, and strengthening. So uh, some, something to look at for sure. The demand is certainly there. Absolutely. And a lot of those feed grains that you just mentioned having strength when we're expecting them usually this time of year to be, you know, weak in most areas, but we're still seeing that strength continue. And a lot of that has to do with our ongoing drought conditions, right? Yeah. That, and that, that's affected the pace of our harvest. Normally uh, when you look at the, for the week ending October the 23rd. So that was uh, this last, last uh, Sunday, uh, last weekend, basically, uh, uh, we normally are uh, five year average, but we're about 74% done for corn harvest. We were at 83. So we're just again running faster, further ahead. And this that's in Kansas, uh, about about nine, 10% higher in the US overall for grain sorghum. 
42% normally where we're at done. And, and here this uh, on the 23rd, we were, we were 53% done. So just stronger than where we were. I should add also for soybeans, uh, soybean, if, if there's one commodity that's had some good news that's come in, it's here of late, we've had a, a jump to a pretty strong week for grain sorghum and you, excuse me, for soybeans. And you do see that some in, in the, in the prices, uh, we we have closed uh, closed on Thursday at thirteen eighty two, and and a quarter. And again, that's uh, we've been trading around uh, fourteen dollars to about thirteen uh, sixty for a while now. So that's that's moving pretty much sideways. But our local basis bids in, again at these same uh, Kansas locations for soybeans. Uh, that well, first of all, they've been hopping all around. Uh, but they, but generally in the last week or so, moving higher, somewhat in the western part of the state, which you really see see the strength more so, in Salina, Hutchinson, uh, Topeka, and Columbus. So we had been much stronger, came down, and now are trending trending back up a little bit. And so uh, again, this strong export week that we just had, and on soybeans, uh, and I think I may have mentioned it, 101 million bushels, uh, and uh, and. That being compared to the rate we need for the whole year of about 30, 39.4. If you, and if you argue, well, in soybeans, we only have half a year until the next South American crop comes in. And if you, you double that rate, uh, you'd be at about 78 to 79 million bushels. We, well, we came in over that. Um, so, you, you know, the uh, South American crops uh, availability starting to slow down some. The market turning its attention to, to the U.S. and uh you know, all for the positive in terms of, of what we're looking at for soybeans. The uh, I would say on a weekly basis, we're just kind of grinding along sideways to to wherever, but uh, in terms of the futures. But so we have the futures being just kind of lackluster, but local basis being positive. That That's saying that uh, eventually the uh, futures market is probably going to have to catch up to what the local basis uh, levels are. And uh, We've you and I have talked about this in previous weeks also. You know the dry conditions in the eastern Corn Belt have really hurt the availability of of uh, corn and soybeans that are that have just been harvested back there, coming down that river system and he heading down to the uh, to the uh, ports at at the, at the Gulf. So with that with that going on, then uh, so maybe uh, it, it probably uh, heightens our ability to move to, well to be demanded for. Uh, for soybeans for shipment by rail head, heading down to the Gulf. And so uh, I, I guess we're probably temporarily benefiting from, from some of the displacement and the dis distortion and in the, in the uh, U.S. soybean market, U.S. soybean shipments that's happening because of that drought in the East. Sure. And you mentioned that drought in Argentina, maybe, you know, heightening our exports out of soybeans. And hopefully we'll see that. Well, I say hopefully not for Argentina's sake, but for our sake, we'll see the same trend happen in the wheat market as well. Right. Well, as you touch on it, you know, it, it's a uh, who wins and who loses in anyone, anyone year in, in, in the export world happens to be, have has a lot to do with who uh, because of either drought or or uh, some other malady does or doesn't have uh, wheat available. But but wheat prices, the, in general, the wheat market uh, closed yesterday on Thursday at 9.32 and a quarter. And again, that's basically sideways to a little bit lower. Uh, the RSI number for for uh, for Chicago wheat, about 46, 47, and 50 is neutral. So just slightly negative. Um, the, um, the actual uh, uh, movement, excuse me, for, for if, if anything, we're probably as concerned about the crop that's been planted right now is the crop that's been moving. But our, but to finish up on the export side, just really slow movement for a bit. There is some hope, as you mentioned, Samantha, uh, on, for the U.S. export sake that that uh, maybe we'll see an uptick uh, of wheat available in uh, well demand coming to us in in the U in in our country because of this uh, dramatic sharp drought impact on wheat production down in Argentina. And apparently customers buying wheat down there would find the most, one of the most readily available substitutes to be U S hard red winter wheat. So we'll see, we'll see still futures are holding up. Well, as we were, we were mentioning uh, wheat planted uh, wheat seedings uh, normally about 79% uh, at, at uh, over the last five years at this stage of the year. And, and we're at 76, so just a little bit late there in terms of wheat emergence. We're normally at 41%. Uh, 
we're at 24 now. And so if, if, if our plantings are a little bit behind, but the emergence is trailing some, that's probably some, some of the dry conditions out west that are affecting the development of that crop at this stage of the year. Sure, of course. And even with what has emerged, concerns, of course, with the ongoing drought here, if that's those, you know, seedlings are even going to be supported in the future if we don't get any rain anytime soon. Yeah, crop insurance uh, plays a big, big role in, in this out to the West. Uh, I think it's an 879 planning price for, for crop insurance, and that's uh, a positive thing. What I, I think when all the shooting is done this year, what I uh, shooting and wondering about what's going on in, in terms of how many acres of wheat we plant, I'll, I'll be really curious, and what type of crop insurance policies we buy. Will people, given how dry things are, are, are they willing to buy up from 70 to 75 to 75 to 80 uh, or, or, or higher with SEO uh, accounts that, that are available? Are, will they come in and see the crop insurance uh, program as, a, uh, as something that, that's a way this year in, in a very dry situation to perhaps protect themselves? It'll cost more. Uh, at, the, at this high price level, uh, we hear a lot of reports of, that the cost of crop insurance has gone up quite a bit, but, but uh, we'll see where it goes. And really, our, my, my colleague, our colleague, Jenny Ift, would be the person to, to best comment on that. But, but, uh, but I would say that the 879 seems to have had producers' attention uh, and hasn't done anything to diminish the amount of wheat planted out in western Kansas. Absolutely. Yeah. Jenny's actually joining us next week, I believe, talking about some deadlines when it comes to insurance. So everybody stay tuned for that because I'm sure she'll have more to share then. But yeah. Dan, I know we've also, you talked, you mentioned briefly there, the Mississippi River and barges traveling down it and how important it is for our exports and here in the U.S. And they're still somewhat paused for the most part. I'm sure that, I think I've read there's smaller systems that are getting through, but the large barges that we really utilize a lot not able to travel down still we're taken to, we've taken to dredging uh parts of the river to try to 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 take what i guess the amount of flow that we have and to try to get get through that i'm sure it doesn't make it any less treacherous to go down in a, in a situation like along those lines um i had a report from a, from a few days ago talking about the, how the water levels in the lower mississippi river continue uh, to, to run low, of course, and the river gauge at Memphis dropping to a record low, 10.76 feet on October 18th. The Ohio River uh, also has low low water levels, uh, and uh, apparently there's some news that came out in the last day or so that that they're opening up some of the lower levels. But uh, really, that the person that they're most listening to, or that uh, in in that part of the country, would be people like Ship Redman, who could give them some idea of the when they'll have a some type of substantial moisture coming to that region to to uh, help those flows get going again uh, my um, there is a question that of uh, of how it, when we do get the river flowing will we will we be able to recover those exports I, I would think that we would that we've got some backed up uh, demand to be some good compensatory gain I guess borrowing from the livestock people uh, there's some other colleagues that that uh, don't think that. Uh, I, 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 I'm thinking, I would guess that in the tightness of world supply demand that we would still see uh, demand come back pretty quickly, particularly if, if when grain does go down the river, there's enough supply that we start to uh, see prices move a little bit lower on the export front. And uh, that, that would probably help us quite a bit in terms of demand. So we'll see where that goes. Absolutely. Yeah. Dan, any advice in terms of producers looking for more information where they can find more maybe on the past week's markets well we do put these reports on the ag manager website www period ag manager period info so uh, we will uh, we'll have that up and uh, we'll also have a recording well uh, th this recording of what you and I are talking about up for people to look at you you also uh, put the information out via via radio and uh, uh, through the uh, KSU Agriculture Today uh, system. So all, all these are in play. And uh, we'll. I, I think maybe the best thing that we do is come back in a disciplined manner every week and, and look at these factors and see what, what adjustments are happening. And that, that helps us to catch some of these basis trends and a few, few other of, of the issues that are just starting to creep up and affect the markets in the short run. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Consistent listeners, they get the the best um, outcome here, I guess is the right way of saying it. But Dan, I will link all of your notes that you put up on Ag Manager every week. I will link those in the show notes of today's program for listeners that are interested. And that can be found on agtoday.net. But Dan, as always, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Thanks, Samantha. Take care. You as well. Once again, that was Dan O'Brien. He is our K-State Grain Market Economist covering this week's Grain Market Update. We will be back with more ahead on agriculture today.